Hey everybody, in this video I want to talk about Mylar. You may have noticed that the books I've shown in the video so far that have dust jackets are all protected in Mylar and have this nice glossy plasticky looking sheen to them. It's a simple but vital way, in my opinion, to keep books looking nice. It not only gives them that um, really cool glossy sheen, it also protects them from wear and tear um, and shelf uh, rubbing, rubbing against other titles in your collection, which can keep the jackets as nice as they were when you first bought them, whatever condition they were in, for the foreseeable future. So in this video, I'm going to talk about Mylar. I'm going to talk about the approach I take, and I'm going to demonstrate how to apply a Mylar to a dust jacket. When it comes to protecting your book jackets with Mylar, um, most everybody can agree that it's an important thing to do. But there are a lot of different ways to go about actually getting the Mylar, getting it on the jackets. I think as long as you meet the end goal of protecting the jacket, you're doing okay. And my approach and my advice is just advice. And it works for me. I believe it can work for you. Um, anybody else who does something different or has different preferences, they would probably give you that advice. And that's okay too, just so long as you get where you need to go. So first thing, there are a number of companies that manufacture the Mylar dust jacket protectors. So you'll, you might hear it referred to as Gaylord, or there's Brodart, or Demco. These are companies that manufacture the Mylar dust jacket protectors. <clears throat> if someone says, pop a Gaylord on it, that's what they're talking about. The Gay Gaylord is the manufacturer, and the dust jacket protector is what they're talking about. So there's different companies, and they come in sheets, they come in rolls. Um, I have ordered rolls, like 300 feet of a certain size of protector, comes rolled up, and I, I don't do the rolls anymore. The pro to that, the nice thing, is that you can cut it exactly to size, to the length of the jacket, so there's nothing wasted. But the con, so as I found as I got farther and farther into the roll, it had actually been dented or creased, and that dent and that crease went through um, probably the last quarter of the roll, which if you're gonna go to the trouble of making your jackets uh, protected and look nice, that's kind of, kind of spoils it when there's a big crease across the plastic. So I haven't um, used rolls and um, also, when it was even worse, I bought some sheets from Amazon and realized that the seller was just a reseller and they had bought them directly from the original manufacturer, broken the package up into smaller pieces, and then resold those smaller packages for a profit. But that that's okay. I don't have a problem with that necessarily, but they folded loosely, but still they folded the pre-cut sheets that I had bought and put them into a smaller box for mailing. And by the time I received them, every single sheet was creased and it was a big drag. So now what I do is I go direct to the source. And for me, I, I go with um, Brodart and I order these and they come, it's kind of a cumbersome way to get them in the mail, but they are shipped, the entire package, however many sheets come in a pack, are on this nice cardboard backing, and the whole thing is wrapped up. So it comes, it's in good shape, it's protected, no creases. Um, this is a very professional company that does business with booksellers, public libraries, um, on a huge scale, but they will sell directly to individual 
consumers. And when I received it, I thought that the packaging was a little over the top, but on the other hand, I could tell that I was dealing with a professional company that cares about its product. And these, um, you can get these in a variety of sizes. If you can see here, these sheets are for books up to 10 inches. And it is okay to go a little bit, to go a couple inches bigger than what you need. So for instance, if you have a book that's eight inches tall and you use a 10 inch um, protector, it's not a big deal. It's not the end of the world. For standard hardcovers, um, hardcover fiction, Stephen King books that are nine inches tall, I like to use the 10 inch Brodart because it gives a little bit of extra wiggle room, um, but is pretty close to the size you actually need. But these come in seven inch, eight inch, nine inch, 12 inch, um, and beyond. So I always try to have a, a variety on hand, generally um, 12 inch for oversized books, like some of the Cemetery Dance editions or Misery from Suntup have a 10 inch trim size. So you need something bigger than the 10 inch Brodart in my experience to give you a little bit of flexibility in case the jacket is a little bit bigger than the stated um, trim size of 10 inches. But for the most part, what I go through are these 10 inch because they cover the majority of books. I have a package of 12, I have a package of nines uh, for shorter books, but um, I don't tend to go through those nearly as quickly as the 10 inch. So I go with the sheets, I don't go with the rolls. Generally speaking, um, this is ample. I have covered books, I have purchased books that came covered where the sheet um, extends beyond the edges of the dust jacket. And you can leave it like that because as you know, the inside of the dust jacket doesn't go all the way to the center of the book. The flaps just come in a little bit. So if there's extra uh, mylar on the edges, on the outside edges of those flaps, it just folds inside the book and it's not a big deal. Um, I've also purchased ones that did not quite cover the entire jacket. And honestly, I'm, I'm not too concerned about that either because the biggest area of concern for wear and tear is of course the outside of the jacket um, as it's rubbing up against other books in your collection. So if the jacket folds around and the actual dust jacket extends a little bit beyond the edges of the mylar protector. Um, I'm not too concerned with that. I can, I can live with that easily. Um, some people's OCD might trigger that <laughs> to um, make it perfect, but I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. So, long story short, the pre-cut sheets um, are what I use and they have a paper backing which I think makes it easier to apply the mylar some companies um, some companies you can purchase mylar that does not have a paper backing it serves the same purpose um, but I just there's just something about the ease of the sheets with the paper backing um, that I really really like so uh, without further ado I will demonstrate my approach to applying one of these sheets to a dust jacket. Okay, so before you get started, it's important um, to have a straight edge, or preferably, in my case, I use a bone folder just a nice solid edge for creasing and folding things and making them look really sharp. So I'm actually going to cover the my copy of Fairy Tale, which needs a cover and which I haven't done yet. So first thing I do, I've laid out my protector and I wanna open up the edges 
to make it as easy to work with as possible. I'm gonna use my folder and not push too hard, but just sort of bend back the paper and make that so it wants to stay open a little bit easier. One of my biggest pieces of advice is don't force it. Take a lot of a lot of time to do a lot of little things, a lot of little movements rather than going just hog wild and pressing down really hard and you'll be just fine. So this, the paper flaps go on the inside. So dust jacket gets inserted upside down and you wanna pull it as close to one end as you can. And you're gonna center it. Once you get it pushed down and flattened out, you wanna kinda of center it between the ends as best you can. This protector will completely cover the jacket, I can see, and have a little bit left over, which is just fine. So once you get it centered, how it looks good, then you want to fold over one end and kind of use your fingers and gently start tucking it in. Now that I've done that, I can see it's a little bit off center. So I'm gonna center it again. And I'm just pulling it down. Like Bob Ross, just using happy little movements, nothing drastic. And the jacket wants to fold up and follow its creases, but it doesn't take much effort to get it to lay flat or flat enough for this purpose. And then to finalize or to really tuck things in, pull over the other half. And it doesn't matter if you fold over the excess on the top or the bottom. I usually just choose to fold it over on the bottom so that the top looks really tidy and neat. And then you just kind of work it up, pull it back. And this is not only making a nice solid um, crease and corner edge at the bottom of the dust jacket, it's also helping to sort of tuck the top of the jacket in to the other half of the protector. Again, I'm gonna use my bone folder and I'm gonna smooth out those creases again. Oh, that's a good sound. On the other side, I'm smoothing out the crease where the paper touches the mylar. I am not yet doing anything to try to finalize or sharpen this edge on the actual jacket. So, do you feel like you have a pretty good fit? Flip it over, take a look at where you're at, what you've done in terms of the top and how it's fitting. If you wanna make a little adjustment, you certainly can. Flip it over, tuck it in there again, sneak a peek, see how things are fitting. This could stand to go down a little bit farther. So as you're using your small movements, tucking things in, let's kind of use your hand to flatten things out. Nothing too solid, nothing too finalized yet. Keep checking. Keep checking. That edge looks pretty solid. I'm pleased with that. So, at this point, while you hold everything in place as best you can without applying too much pressure, if you pull too hard, you have the tendency to curl or bow the jacket. So just try to find that sweet spot 
where you're applying the right amount of pressure to keep things just in place while also going with how the jacket is and how it wants to lay flat. I'm using my finger now, my fingers to make more firm presses on that crease and then I'm going to use the bone folder to fold everything. I do one half and kind of repeat the process on the other side. That's one thing that I've found is it's really hard to hold everything just so all the way across. And you have a, gosh, what is this? A two foot long dust jacket. And if you just swoop across the entire mylar at one time, it can come out a little crooked. So pushing down, firming up that crease with my fingers on the other side. And I'm gonna use my bone folder, kind of push things down into place, tighten that up. And now it's pretty good all the way across. A couple more passes with the bone. And, <clears throat> excuse me. And then flip it over and see what I got. And there you go. A, well, I'm not gonna say perfectly applied, <laughs> but it's applied and applied mylar. The book jacket is now covered. Take the book, place it back where it goes. Fold the flaps. Now, in a, in a lot of ways, and I've kind of used this analogy before, putting the mylar on the jacket is kind of almost like putting a diaper on the jacket. It doesn't quite know what to do with that extra bulk it now has. Uh, you may need to, again, be gentle, be gentle but firm and sort of reintroduce the creases where they go. And as you can see, the paper backing extends a little bit beyond the edges of the jacket, but you know, it's not, not the end of the world. I think it would have been way more complicated to try to trim this sheet to make it fit exactly. So I will leave it as is. It doesn't look too bad. And there you have it. Now, there are various um, glossy glossiness and luster of the sheets. I tend to go for this particular type because it's inexpensive. Um, and it looks really nice. I like the bright glossy. There is a low luster, which comes across a bit more like a matte photograph and it gets the job done. It still protects, but the downside to the high luster and glossy is that the, the protectors can attract to each other and get a little sticky on the shelf, especially when they're brand new. Now, over time, um, as months and years go by, then the finish, the sheen, the luster of this mylar will sort of die down a little bit and it won't have that sort of stickiness um, with the other covered books on the shelf. But anyway, yeah, that's Fairy Tale, now officially covered. So I will pop a bunch of links, anything I can think of, into the description um, where I go to to buy the sheets, um, a, a bone folder. Uh, these are not hard to find, nor are they expensive, but I can share a link to the one that I bought. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out in the comments and I will respond and provide whatever answers that I might be capable of providing. Um, as I mentioned at the beginning, there's a lot of different ways to do this. There's a lot of ways to get from point A to point B um, 
And as long as the end goal is met, which is protecting the jackets, uh, there's really no right or wrong way. People have their different preferences, and what I have just shared are simply my preferences. But I find it um, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. I know some people um, express that they've tried to apply Mylar to their dust jackets, and it's tricky, and they just can't get it, and it's frustrating. Um, my key advice is just to go slow and be gentle and use lots of little movements, take time um, in the right frame of mind. It's almost sort of a Zen activity to sort of become one <laughs> with the dust jacket. And I'm not just making that up. I, I have actually thought that while I've been covering lots of jackets and spending quite a bit of time doing this. Um, so there's no right or wrong way to do it, but I do sincerely believe in the value of covering jackets, protect, particularly if it's a book that you want to have in your collection, that you want to keep around and keep looking nice for as long as possible. Even if the book has a ratty jacket, um, that's maybe all the more reason to protect it because in a sense it sort of stops the deterioration or the wear wherever it is and protects the jacket and gives it um, sort of a new lease on life. And when all the books are together on the shelf, it just gives it that really nice, um, glossy, reflective sheen, which I, I just think looks really sharp. But anyway, I hope that this has been useful. Like I said, leave any comments or questions um, in the comments to the video and I will try to respond um, as quickly as I can. But thank you very much for your time, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.